Ancient of days, August Athena, where, where are the men of might, the grand in soul? Gone, glimmering through the dream of things that were. A while back, I was a big fan, I suppose I still am, of uh, the British uh, English um, TV character, literary character, Horace Rumpole, the arch cynic, uh, the radical who looked actually and lived just like a stodgy English barrister. Um, he was actually a, quite a radical, even though to look at um, his overt life, uh, he was about as stodgy and as crusty as it was as it's possible to be. Uh, but when you got to know him, you realized that. Um, he was probably more radical than the actual radicals that he came into contact with. Um, he was cynical of just about everything. He was cynical of his own wife, although in, in his own way he loved her. He was happily married in, in his own way. Um, and uh, he was cynical of uh, a lot of his clients. He was cynical of the system that he served. Um, but um, often, as he uh, made his way from the tube station to the temple, uh, the court district of uh, London, he would um, go through poetry in his head. I think he usually quoted Milton. And you got the sense when reading and when watching the TV show that this is what really meant something to, uh, to Rumpole, was the poetry. Um... I do something similar to that, uh, possibly because of my upbringing. I was uh, raised in a home where poetry was not considered unmanly, which I guess is just something, sort of a hangover from uh, the Irish background that I have and I'm always talking about. But re reading poetry is not considered effeminate or getting moved by it in the Irish community, um, the way it is in some communities. So. When I'm out walking, which is my daily regime, I guess, I walk to work, uh, rain or shine, um, well, usually snow or not snow, because I bicycle to work in the summer and walk in the winter, I often recite poetry to myself in my own mind. I don't say it out loud. No one else hears me doing it. As far as they're concerned, there's a guy who's walking to work. If I pass a particularly impressive building, uh, and there's quite a few in, on my way, uh, at least by Canadian standards, not by, say, Italian or French standards, but by Canadian standards. There's a lot of old buildings with pillars and, um, you know, the, this kind of fake um, classical architecture that came about around about the end of the 19th and turn of the 20th centuries. Um, I gaze up at that and sort of dream a little bit. Uh, I guess you'd call it reverie or whatever. Um, is that prayer? I don't think that it is, but in a sense it seems suspiciously like prayer. It seems suspiciously like some sort of matins or vespers or daily service or something like that, a daily refresher for my mind. Should I be somehow conscious uh, of the effect that this sort of thing is having on me and how it's acting on my subconscious and my irrational mind. Is this the sort of thing that's going to one day lead me down uh, the path to religion? I just quoted Byron here. Um, he mentions Athena, uh, the ancient Greek goddess, uh, Romans knew her as Minerva, a uh, big statue of her in Vienna, and I think there's a few in London as well, um, is my recitation of these ancient hymns to Zeus and um, Dionysus likely to land me in church, or at least turn me into someone who actually takes all of these gods and goddesses seriously at face value? Is the subconscious... Um, desire, or perhaps one could even say requirement, for something that leaps beyond the rational and the physical and the scientific, 
something that we should be afraid of and attempt to repress. Is it prayer? Thank you.